love us all to just go for a brief walk into the house and grab a towel that's quite sturdy, not too fluffy, that we can roll up a bit. I will see you in a minute. So um, when you return, I've gotten myself a, uh, a bath towel and I will just roll it up. Now mine is a little bit too much, so I will only partially roll it up. So I want to use this towel in a few positions today to help us release. We will begin using uh, the towel today. So either a fully rolled up one, and if that is as thick as mine, for example, maybe leaving an area off. So we will start um, our practice lying down on the backs and um, you can be comfortable there placing your neck over the rolled up towel. So making sure that it's comfortable and if you like while you're adjusting yourselves maybe pushing with your fingers a little bit against the towel so it starts to touch here to the shoulders. You can leave your feet um, resting on the ground and just releasing the arms by the sides and without doing anything quite yet, just simply closing the eyes. If you notice your roll is a little bit too high or a little bit too low, um, you can adjust that. And then a resting over the towel. Now, if someone is very tight around the neck and the shoulder area, you will already feel that the towel is gently stimulating the back of the neck. And unless that is painful, that's already a slight release. Now today we're presented with a couple of things um, to consider. One is a bit of tightness around the neck and shoulder area, which we're addressing almost immediately by resting over the rolled up towel. And the other one is a pain around the heel, which is also part of the back line. So when we're talking about our back line, it starts on the soles of the feet, goes all the way along the backs of the legs, through the buttocks, along the back, then travels up the back of the neck and uh, finishes around the top of the head, slightly further forward. So um, when we're resting over the towel, we're already starting to address our feet, <laughs> which we will do with a little bit of movement later on uh, in a more particular way. And I'm also aiming to allow us to stretch through the back. Whether we believe that or not, there's already a stretch happening in that back line, just resting the back of the neck over the towel. When we feel tight, quite often a bit of warmth is nice to accompany our practice with. So we will take on Surya Mutra, that's the Sun Mutra. And for that Mutra, in case you will look up, I will step up towards the screen. We will take in both hands our ring fingers 
towards the base of the thumb, just more towards the center of the palm. And then take our thumb on top of that and leave index, middle and little finger extended. So it's the ring finger to the base of the thumb and the thumb over the top and the other fingers are extended. With the mudra like this, just resting the backs of the hands to the floor and uh, resting the neck over a rolled up towel, we're taking a few breaths. Deep, full yogi breathing if available to you. So moving your breaths from the belly to the ribs, to the collarbones, and out again from belly to ribs, to collarbones. Noticing if there's any change in the way you're feeling or your energy by holding your fingers in that position, which could be confused very easily with our resting position and how that affects us. So we can't really separate those, but we can stay in touch with how we're feeling. While you keep yourself resting here like this and breathing with full yogi breaths or maybe even adding ujjayi technique. Let us use an inhalation to just roll the head over the towel to the side. So the head can't fall forward and we're leaving it grounded. On the out breath, rolling your head back into center. It's a very slow movement. On the inhale, rolling the head to the other side. On the exhale, centering again. And then keep doing so, just rolling the head on the in breath to one side. Maybe you can get all the way to the side of the neck on the outer centering. Stay in contact with your towel as you're turning the head. Gently massaging. If you've got a feeling that this rolled up towel is diminishing with the movement, you can edit another tuck in so you can really feel the neck being gently massaged against the towel. When you've turned your head then evenly to each side, rest it for a moment in the center. As this rolled up towel is quite a nice support really for the neck and the head as well. We will leave it just where it is right now. If it gets in the way, you can always remove it or just leave it folded up as a light cushioning underneath the head. Let us take a deeper breath in and circle our arms Bend or straight, whichever feels good, up and then back down by the sides. On the inhale, lift them up and I'm still holding my mudra, my ring finger touching the base of the thumb, the thumb touching over the ring finger on each hand, of course.
Getting a little bit of movement here into the shoulder area. If this is too much for you, make it smaller or bend the arms more. And if you're really going high and your towel is a little bit wider, you get a bit of a massage over the tops of the shoulders here as well. Going for two more. Once completed, pause. You can even relax the mudra now and just leave your fingers relaxed. And maybe noticing what you're feeling right now. There could be sensations from the movement we've completed. Maybe that's an energy that you can feel down to the fingers. Maybe other sensations are my dominant stimulation over the neck, stimulation on the shoulders. I will ask you now to turn the palms of the hands down towards the ground. To bring your feet to touch at about hip distance apart. As we come into movement, we're reasonably used to flexing through the right foot. And while you're breathing in, you can slide the heel along the floor or extending the leg just above the ground. Then point the foot. And as you're breathing out, stepping the foot back onto the ground. Left foot flexes. Inhaling, extending the leg out slowly. Pointing the foot. As you're breathing out, slowly bringing the foot back onto the ground where we started. And as we repeat that with the right, flexing the foot, extending the leg out, Make sure that you're quite solid, stable around the pelvis. Pointing as you're breathing out to land the foot back onto the ground. Again, on the left, flex it as you're breathing in to extend. Point it while you're breathing out to bring the foot back onto the ground. Now, while I'm inviting you to just continue that, there will be an option now to extend the movement quite significantly as you can bring your knee into the chest for a squeeze before you step the foot back down and start again on the other side. So flexing left foot, extending on the inhale, watch for stability pointing the foot on the out breath, bring the knee with your hands to the chest, then stepping back down. Take your time if you need half a breath extra or a full breath extra, that's fine too. Pointing out breath, maybe hugging into the chest. Now, really pretty much depending on how you are feeling today, could you have another extension of this movement? Nothing changes while you're inhaling, foot is flexed, we're extending the leg with as much stability as we can manage. Then when you're pointing and hugging in, you might lift your nose up to the knee before lying back down and stepping back down. Flex the foot on the other side, inhale to extend, point. 
And maybe when exhaling, nose to the knee. Continue for another couple with each leg and with whatever variation you are working with right now. You might be at a different pace. Don't worry about yours. As always, we're breathing at a different pace. We might move at a different pace and that's okay. There will be time to catch up. When you have completed, rest your arms open, maybe let the knees drop inwards and pause. Wiggles into the right position, of course possible. And begin to notice how you're feeling now. There was a bit of movement, it went through the whole body. So maybe you can feel something more active happening or you're just feeling a little bit more relaxed, whichever way we're going. Allowing your knees to separate again. So we've got you roughly back to hip distance stands with the feet. I will ask you now to bend your elbows and to make little fists with your hands. With little, I mean soft. Take a breath in. And as you're breathing out, releasing the fists, touching palms, maybe even elbows together over your body. On the inhale, make fists, open your arms all the way towards the mat or the ground. And when you're exhaling, touching palms, maybe the whole forearms. Now, this is reasonably easy to do. So if you would like to add a bit of a lift while you're touching, lifting head and shoulders, elbows towards the belly. On the inhale, we're lying back, opening the arms. On the exhale, maybe lifting elbows towards the belly. Inhale, open, exhale, close. Continue and as you're lifting, maybe deliberately engaging the pelvic floor as well. Two more. You completed them. Rest back down. Relax. And if you felt and you did lift the head, the neck starting to tighten again, you might want to push your towel roll back into position and while you're leaving the rest of the body resting, rolling the head again very slowly from side to side. And leave your head resting as well.
taking the rolled up towel out from underneath the neck and we'll move the towel now more under the lower back so you might step your feet in a little bit lift the hips off the ground and I'm deliberately now rolling up my whole towel and just placing that just about somewhere between the pelvis and the lower back. So a point where I feel I get a little bit of release uh, from lower back. Once you've got your towel resting there, lifting both feet off the ground. Leaving your arms by the sides with the palms of the hands touching the floor. You might already notice that there's some type of engagement around the core just by lifting the feet off the floor. Let's point our feet and then tapping the toes down as you breathe in and lifting back up as you breathe out and that on both sides, one after the other. Inhaling, tap the toes down or move them towards the floor if that's too far and lift them back up. So this movement here is again working on our back line as we're stimulating here around the lower back and back of the pelvis. But we're also strengthening our core at the same time. So same as in the other movement, we want as much stability as we can hold while we're moving one leg at a time. Let's have a couple more on each side and please feel welcome to rest earlier if you need to. When completed, we're landing the feet back onto the mat. Maybe we'll take care that the toes are facing forward and that we've got a hip distance stance from here. Let the arms lower down by your sides. Start to squeeze the buttocks muscles and just lifting the hips up for a bridge. Removing our rolled up towel from underneath and allowing us to roll back down a vertebra at a time. We will do one more thing that's related to our back line. For that, push yourself up as straight as you can to come to sit. Take your rolled up towel and place it lengthwise onto the mat. And I suggest, same as we do with the block, to just leave the towel roughly at the end of the rib cage over the spine. And then we're lying down over the towel. If your head feels too low, you can cushion that up. Otherwise, we might take our arms out to the sides and you could touch the palms to the floor this time. Legs out long won't be for everyone, so feel free to step your feet down onto the ground. We'll take a little pull with the left hand and just rocking over towards the right shoulder blade, but not onto it, so just before it. Then pull yourself over with the right hand to the left side of the spine. And I will ask you to keep going like this, just a stimulation on either side of the spine 
as we're moving over the towel. And try and do that uh, reasonably slow, so not too fast, and allowing these tiny little pauses once you've dropped over to one side of the spine. We are stimulating fascia and muscles between the shoulder blades and the spine itself. But we're also opening ourselves up from the solar plexus to the throat. When you're next in balance, pulling yourself over from side to side, stay centered. Let your arms relax a bit more by the sides of the body. Let your spine relax over the rolled up towel. Maybe if that's okay for you, open the eyes, take a look what it looks like. So upside down above your head. And then start to slide your fingertips slightly underneath the buttocks, elbows bend and we we'll squeeze the elbows a little bit in. Starting to lift the chin into the chest and pushing ourselves up into sitting. You might leave your towel by the side of the mat. That could be, that could be a good excuse to use it again um, just for relaxation. I will just uh, for a little while take my socks off so you can see my own feet and you could do the same as we come to sit here. Let's walk out a little bit through the sit bones, legs extended out in front of us. If you've got trouble sitting this flat and upright, you can already use the towel again just to sit on. Hands can go right by the side of the hip, either flat down or you could rest on fists. Toes are lightly pointing up towards the ceiling. Now it's the first time we're actually using our front line as well as we're pointing through the feet and then flexing them. Now if there's problems through the heels, there might be a problem here. So I ask you to go very gently if that's the case and just noticing what's possible for you, no forcing. I'll ask you then to keep the feet in a light flexion, to use hands or fists down by the side as we inhale. And on the exhale, lifting through the pelvic floor, maybe the hips coming off the ground. And then releasing back down onto the mat. Let's bend the knees a little bit further. If you like to fold forward with bent knees and you're not sitting on it, you could use the rolled up towel now underneath your knees. Let your hands rest upon the legs as we breathe in, just to lift up into a tall seat. And then as you're breathing out, just sliding maybe one hand at a time forward, keeping the spine long and just bending from the hips. You will get to a point where you're noticing some resistance Stay at that point, maybe close the eyes, adjust the neck to realign with the rest of the spine, leave your shoulders relaxed, and then take a deep breath in through the nose, allowing a soft, long sigh out of the mouth. 
inhaling through the nose, Sighing softly and long out of the mouth. One more. Then pause. Being as honest with yourself as you're able to and just noticing if there's anything that has changed. If you feel a slight further release, you might bring your hands one after the other a little bit further forward, making sure that we're staying reasonably long, shoulders still relaxed, and going to a new point of resistance. Keeping your spine still long for another three breaths, followed by a long sigh out. I'll leave you to that, inhaling nose, exhaling mouth. When you completed those three, and please feel free to even adjust the bend in your knees if you need to. We will find out if it feels all right to go yet a little bit further still, as you might reach with one hand and then the other. Now I invite you to round your back, to even lower the head. Noticing where you can feel that all across your back line. So noticing where you're feeling it. For me, the strongest sensation is right across the calves towards the backs of the knees. And then the next extension is more in the mid back. But you could feel that in different places. These are just hints on where to explore. You've checked in with your body. We're repeating three breaths in through the nose and sighs out of the mouth. But keep the sighs long and deliberate. You completed those again for a moment, just relaxing here and observing. Sliding then maybe one hand at a time back as you come up into sitting again. If you place something under the knees, please remove that from here. We will stick still with the idea of moving through our back line, but we'll also strengthen the front. So let's bring our fingertips behind us and I'm shuffling around to find the space between the sit bones in which to sit. If you can, only leave the balls of the feet or your toes on the ground, touching your knees together. We will roll them over to one side while looking over the opposite shoulder. As we breathe in, we're centering ourselves and then we're moving over to the other side. So we're adding a light twist into the movement a different way of moving through the spine and we're rolling over the glutes. So maybe there's a loosening up in the glutes happening here as well. If you find this is reasonably easy, you can lift your feet off the floor. 
and maybe deepening the movement, especially as we're rolling over the buttocks. Now, if this is a good experience for you, you could stay with it. If you would like to add even more core strength, you could start to open the knees while you're keeping your toes touching, squeezing the knees in. You're touching, opening and squeezing inwards. If you still want more, lift your hands off the floor. Two more to each side. Then resting the feet down, touching them together, reaching for your toes. You can pull the legs in if that suits you. Taking a breath in as you lengthen your spine and then swaying side to side as you make your way a little bit forward. Your elbows might come to touch the lower legs. They might not and both is perfectly okay. We will allow for a little bit of pressure if you are touching down onto your legs with the elbows by pushing the elbows into the legs and moving the legs up against the elbows and just holding a bit of tension. And then a breath out by releasing that tension, letting the knees become heavy towards the floor. I'll repeat that twice more. As we're pushing down with the elbows into the legs, the legs moving up towards the elbows, holding a little bit of tension. And then let them drop again on the out breaths. One more, pushing up. And then releasing it. Once more, let's extend the back line, but just lowering the head down. You can turn the head lightly if there's any rest of tension sitting around the neck. And then slowly rolling up to sit. Now I will give uh, two variations here that are very, very different. I would love us to practice a triangle and maybe a tree. Both are incorporating movements of the arms. So saying that these are traditionally done standing, of course, if you can't stand upright today or you're just not feeling it, you can lie yourself down, bringing one leg a little bit forward, leaning down to the side and then moving uh, with the body as you are lying here. So in a moment, demonstrate the movement standing and you would just simply do that lying down like this, legs a little bit open, leaning to one side, arms touching. Now, for those of you who would like to practice that standing, we will find our way up into standing. And I will ask you to step the feet wide on your mat. And maybe we're starting with the right foot turned out and the left heel a bit turned out. We will turn towards the front leg touching the palms together and just looking downwards. See if you can lengthen your spine and really find your stands across the feet. And there comes the movement. While you're inhaling, lift the upper arm, maybe follow it with the gaze and then rolling it down as you're breathing out. So I'm not after a hold in this triangle, I'm after more movement. So while you're breathing in, 
opening and then relaxing and rolling the arm back down as you're breathing out. Repeat that on this side for three more breaths. When your hands are afterwards touching again, lengthen the spine once more and then lift yourself up to stand, relax the arms and turn your feet in the other direction. While we're turning the left foot out, the right heel a little bit, so it's more natural that the hip rolls inwards there, changing sides if you're lying on the floor as well. Touching your hands as you're moving towards your left leg now. Finding your stands, long spine to begin with. Feeling your support, the feet on the ground, legs strong. And then start the same movement again. As you inhale, opening the right arm. And then rolling it back down when you're breathing out. You can follow the hand with the gaze. If that's too strong, you could also keep your gaze down. So if there's too much tension in the neck, sometimes looking up isn't right. Repeating for another two. When the hands are touching again, making that effort to lengthen through the spine and then pushing into the feet to rise to stand, relaxing the arms, turning your toes forward and bringing your legs together. Now, if you are practicing um, on the floor currently, you can choose to stay there for the tree shape. If you prefer to do, and there's an arm movement involved, just the arm movement, you can do that seated. So we will place the right foot up and you can choose to just open the knee out, maybe stepping the foot up a little bit or coming into a deeper tree and we're pressing the leg against the foot and the foot against the leg finding a nice tall stance from the soles of the foot right up to the crown of the head. Let's open the arms out, finding our Surya Mudra again as we're folding the ring finger to the base of the thumb and touching the thumb over the ring finger with the remaining three fingers extended. Now let's draw a sun up as you inhale lifting the arms, on the exhale, releasing the arms, inhaling, lifting the arms, exhaling, releasing, one more, Pausing here at the top of the inhalation and on the exhale, releasing the arms and stepping the foot to the ground, relaxing your hands and without changing anything, just noticing how heavy one foot might feel in comparison to the others. And we're changing sides. So placing weight onto the right foot and you can choose your tree here anew. It doesn't have to be the same as it was on the other side. If you do want to bring the foot up, like myself, creating pressure between foot and leg. 
rising really tall from the sole of the foot to the crown. We're opening the hands again, returning to Surya Mutra as we place the ring finger to touch the base of the thumb, the thumb to come on top of the finger so it stays in place, leaving the other fingers extended, nice and steady gaze, strong stance. Inhaling, arms circle up over the head. Exhaling, releasing the arms back by the sides. Inhaling to lift. Exhaling to release. Next one is our last one. So while we're breathing in, we're pausing right up there at the end of our inhalation. And as we're releasing on the out breaths, we're also stepping the foot back to the ground. Release the arms, standing or lying in a mountain. to find our way back onto the ground. For those of us standing, bend the knees, tuck the chin in, let the hands touch the thighs and slowly roll down. Hopefully there's a lot of space in our back line, even if there isn't just moving down towards the ground and then finding our way to a seat. Just having one leg in front of the other, whichever one you're choosing. Let's have one more big reach up with the arms, inhale. Now turn to the leg in front for a little twist as you're exhaling. You might place one hand against the leg, other hand fingertips behind and just turning while you're staying grounded. On your next in-breath, lifting the arms out and up again for your son. And then swing around to the other side as you're breathing out. Lifting the arms out and up one more time. Just centering ourselves and bringing the hands down to the heart space. I'll give you again two options. If you found that was enough time lying down, you can finish your practice today with a seated meditation. If you like lying down, just like myself, that tiny bit more than sitting upright, you can do the same meditation lying down. It will be about Surya Mutra. So I will ask you again to touch the tip of your ring finger to the base of the thumb and to bring the thumb over the ring finger, extending out index, middle and little finger. Now, if you choose to stay seated, make sure you are supported so it's an effortless seat. If you want to lie down, I suggest to uh, reuse the towel again and um, lie with the uh, back of the neck over the towel. So that you are a little bit supported here, maybe very gently stimulated. You can have your legs extended, of course. You can cover yourself with blankets. You can support with bolster under the knees or whatever else you might want to do to feel comfortable. There's your mutra. You're holding it and you will close your eyes. If that is challenging for you, you might instead to steady your gaze towards the ceiling. Let's get used to the shape first that you're in. As you're noticing the body resting on the floor, whether that's underneath your sit bones as you're seated or whether that's the back resting down. A 
and then tuning in with Surya Mudra again, the hand position. Allowing yourself uh, to relax with the focus on your hands. Notice how your breath is naturally directed into your solar plexus. The seat of the fire element. I'm stealing a sense of energy and radiance. In order to enhance this experience of radiant energy, visualize a golden sun at the center of your being infusing you with the fire elements, essential qualities. Begin by sensing the light and warmth of the sun's golden rays, bathing your digestive system, enhancing the power of transformation and assimilation of nutrients. Taking several gentle breaths to sense your inner sun, illuminating all of your digestive organs, supporting them in functioning optimally, nourishing every cell of the body with vital energy. With your physical digestion more complete, the light of your inner sun now encompasses your thoughts and feelings, allowing you to digest life experiences more easily while releasing accumulated emotions and memories that drain your energy. with optimal digestion at all levels of your being. The light of your inner sun illuminates your vision, allowing you to perceive your life purpose more clearly. Take several gentle breaths to envision the unfolding of all your possibilities while naturally receiving the determination to overcome any obstacles along your journey. As the rays of your inner sun grow in intensity, they naturally burn away any clouds of doubt and lethargy, allowing you to manifest your vision completely.
Affirm your radiant energy as you repeat the following three times, aloud or silently. Awakening my inner sun's radiant energy. I live with the abundant vitality. Awakening my inner sun's radiant energy. I live with abundant vitality. Awakening my inner sun's radiant energy. I live with abundant vitality. Slowly release the gesture, stay restful while taking several breaths to absorb the light of your inner sun. Taking all the qualities of the fire element with you into your day. You can either just deepen your breathing from here and move a little as you join us in a seated shape. from where we might draw one more sun around us by taking a deep breath in, reaching the arms out and up, pausing a little bit at the end of the inhalation and then drawing the hands right down to the heart. A light bow of the head. Maybe you can feel a little fire that sits below the heart center in the solar plexus. The fire we sparked within us, we're extending to all the fires around us, the light bow. Namaste.